Your tea, sir. Why? Thank you. Excellent service, I must say. Don't you think so, Isaac? Please help yourself to refreshments and food. Thank you. I'm I'm fine. Isaac answered testily. Azri noticed the change in Isaac's demeanor and slowly moves towards Isaac's left ear and whispered, "If you don't behave, I shall leave you here and call it a day. All of it. If you want me to take you seriously, be patient." Isaac was shocked at the suggestion coming from Azri. He did his best to not burst out and shout profanities to Azrin, who had been stringing him along for more than a month to agree for a meeting. Yes, my apologies, Azrin. I shall behave. Oh, don't bother. I have to leave, as I have another important matter to attend to shortly. I will be in touch. Isaac was in shock, flabbergasted, and seeping with rage. What just happened? He angrily thought to himself. Yes, I'm on my way. Azrin was careful not to be seen communicating with LB through his concealed mouthpiece. The extremely tiny mouthpiece communicator was a marvel in technology, as its size and ability for concealment was second to none. It is highly prized by those who thrive by avoiding unnecessary interest from onlookers. No drones, I will walk. Thank you. Azrin walked briskly out of the clubhouse garden, brushing past the waiter that had served him, and into the main thoroughfare. Where the pulse of coordinated movement was carrying on with its inane regularity, Azrin walked for about five minutes along the shaded walkway, and quietly, without attracting too much attention, disappears behind a row of plasteel fencing. To the untrained eye, Azrin probably took a shortcut to his destination, but it was a drop, a finely tuned intelligence exchange of information. As quickly as he disappeared, he was back on the walkway. Continuing his journey back to his office, cool and collected, Azrin was a pro, but not many are aware of his ability. He continues on without even breaking his momentum. He knows he has the information nugget safely kept until he reaches his safe zone to decipher the message. UNE Terenda Shenzhen Longjiang Shipyard, UNE Saigon Space Elevator Six, Platform, Geostationary Earth Orbit. The view of Earth from the platform was majestic and breathtaking. The curvature of the Earth could be seen from the main elevator disembarkation platform, which was disgorging numerous commuters to their work destinations at the shipyard close by. This platform was purpose-built for servicing personnel and goods for the Longjiang shipyard. The human traffic that was shuffling through the platform was too focused on arriving for work rather than enjoying the magnificent view. Except today, a lone figure was standing and facing the main viewing platform, with the entire vista of Earth before him. He stands quietly alone, with both hands clasped behind his back, like a serviceman standing at ease before inspection. His breathing was quiet and long drawn. He comes here nearly every day, and yet the view of Earth was still a sight to behold. The crisp lines of his work tunic. And the earth blue insignia of the UNE above his left breast pocket, with gold on red dash on his narrow type collar, signifies command or senior UNE personnel. Ahem, <clears throat> sir. He turns his head around to the location of that controlled interruption. He finds it distasteful that his before work routine is violated. This is especially true if it involves a very young and very junior subaltern. Sir, I apologize for the interruption, but the team is ready for you. The nervous tone of her voice was difficult to control. This was her first week at work, and also her first encounter with the program director of the Garuda class UNE vessels, Albert Chan. 